Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Nettleman, and I'm here to tell you the three things you need to know in order to pass your Florida PSM jurisdictional exam. I love Florida because Florida is the first state I was ever licensed. I was uh, a little nervous, I was uh, concerned, I was unsure about what to expect on the state exam. So I just uh, got the statutes, I read the statutes like a thousand times, and I got started. Well, I created this course to help you figure out what you need to know in order to pass your Florida exam. So let's cover the three most essential skills you need to know in a short video, and that can be your starting point for your PSM exam study experience. To begin with, I love the Florida exam because it's, it's very focused. You know, California tests everything surveying, while Florida only tests one thing, the statutes. Now, there are a lot of statutes, but it's definitely a lot uh, of a more focused, narrow exam than most other states. Now, the first thing you need to know is, you know, you've got to be well prepared. Number one skill is having your stuff together. And what I mean by that is you've got to, first of all, locate, you know, what is on the exam? What is going to be tested? Well, they're the statutes, but what statutes? You need to know that. Number two, if I give you a hypothetical question, your mind should automatically go to what statute probably contains the answer. So you gotta be a good guesser. And then third, you need to be able to read the fine print. If you can find the statutes, if you can guess the best statute, and if you can you know, really read the fine print, that will get you through the Florida PSM exam with flying colors. So let's talk about that. You know, number one, you've got to be able to find the statute. So how do you do that? Number one, first of all, you go online and you pull up the exam blueprint. And the exam blueprint is gonna tell you what is tested. 177, 472, 95, 718, 62B33, 287055. These are the statutes that you need to have really internalized before ever beginning this exam. Not only do you need to be able to know what they are, but you have to go online and you have to find the statutes. You've got to realize there's a difference between a Florida statute and a Florida administrative code. And you have to be able to search for those on the state of Florida website, print them out, organize them, and read them. So, this is kind of a big deal because going and finding all these statutes is going to take you a solid couple of days because you want to make sure that they're up to date. Statutes and administrative code change every year. So be careful. Don't mess around and don't download the wrong statute. Otherwise, you are going to be in trouble on exam day. Number two, guess the statute. Now let's play a game. The first question says, according to FS 177, a subdivision means. Well, this is an easy one because the question tells you to go to Florida Statute 177. That's a gimme. But others will say something like, no one shall blank any dwelling house, hotel, motel, blah, 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 within 50 feet of mean high water. Mean high water is the key word. And that leads me probably to either 177 or 62B33. So if I see a key word, I expect you to guess the statute. So my top guess is 161. My second guess is 62B33. And if all else fails, go to 177. You need to do that because you're gonna come up with some very tough questions. 
and you have to go searching through hundreds or thousands of pages of papers to find the answer. Now, when I do this, I get this gut feeling because I've read the Florida statute so many times. And what I want you to do is to get that gut feeling as well. You read something, you latch on to a keyword, you make your guess, you go find the answer. Because it is impossible that you're gonna be able to memorize all of these statutes. You will be hunting for answers. I want you to hunt smart instead of wasting all your time flipping through pages. And this leads me to another point, which is exam strategy. When I go to an exam, I answer the easy questions first, then I answer the kind of difficult questions, but I save a lot of my time, maybe up to one third of the entire exam to go find the tough questions. Why do I do that? Because answering the tough questions is what is going to separate you from the people who don't pass. You have to be a rock star. You've got to be better than the people around you. So if you can answer half of the tough questions correctly, while your competition only answers a quarter, then you will pass and they will fail. So make sure that you can answer tough questions. But do not waste your time answering tough questions when you should be answering the easy ones first. So answer the easy questions, answer the questions who take a little bit of time, and then reserve between one-fifth and one-third of your time going and hunting for those tough questions. Be smart. Last but not least is the small print. And when I say small print, there are going to be some BS questions on this exam. They are going to be confusing. They are going to be in the minutia, and it's going to be hidden. You know, there's a, there's a paragraph with a thousand words in one paragraph, and right in the middle of that 1,000 word is going to be your answer. You have to be able to hunt and pick the right answer. And it's boring, and it's exhausting because you're already tired from this exam, but you've got to be able to find these answers when other people can't. So as an attorney, I kind of like reading through minutia. I've been trained to do that, but you may not have. So be prepared to look for the answer when it's not obvious. How do you do that? Write your own questions and then test yourself. Have your boss write some questions and test you. But you've got to be able to find the minutia. And realize that finding the small print often takes a lot of time. And that's why I budget such a big percentage of the exam for answering such a small percentage of questions. So I spend 30% of my exam answering 10% of the tough questions. That's a little ridiculous. But if you have the time, don't quit early. If you've got extra time, use it effectively. And as always, just stay calm. You know, you will find a lot of examinees freak out when they can't find an answer, and they'll start paging through their statutes like a madman. Don't do that. Stay calm, stay cool, stay collected, and you can do this. You only need a 70% to pass this exam. Do your best, work hard, prepare, and let me know when you pass your Florida exam because I love success stories.